Manchester City and it is our absolute pleasure to have been here every step of the way for Manchester City this season. Look, let's just talk about that first half though. It was one of the most remarkable first 45 minutes of football that I think any of us have seen. Yeah, as good as it gets. Yeah. I can't I can't really remember. Liverpool in, in recent years have blown teams away in the first half. Um, I can think of a few good performances, great performances. Um, but rarely, I, I'm trying to think of something as dominant as that. That was ruthless. And you've got to take into consideration the opposition, the, the, the uh, stage of the competition as well, um, the pressure that was on them, everything. That was just... That was just unbelievable. I mean, it took our breath away watching yeah. it. Yeah, I think you can look at performances like that and recognise there has been them in regards to Liverpool. But the, the tie was potentially over. It was like 4-0, so you expected it. But when the tie was so close and so in the balance, you don't expect a team to just dominate the way that, that Man City did tonight. And I think it's the, it's the manner in which they've done it. It wasn't like uh, we, we've just like, kind of come out and run over you. It was uh, tactically, they dominated. Even being clinical... And they had their foot on their throat and it was like they were just stamping on their throat, just keeping it there and positioning them where they wanted them around the pitch. And then, bang, goals, clinical at the right time. They, they, were, they were mesmer... Uh, mesmeric, mesmeric at times. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they took your breath away today. And, you, and we were sitting there in, the, in that studio going, how'd you beat these guys? Yeah. How, how could you get away from being penned back and just drain the life out of you? I, I played against the Pep Guardiola side, which arguably I think is the best uh, club side ever in Barcelona when they had Messi and they won a Champions League and they beat us. This team, they've got to win, they've got to win, win this, this title and maybe a couple of times, but they're on route, I think, to be classed alongside teams like that if they continue in this vein of form. Three back-to-back -back Premier Leagues, a potential um, treble in the waiting, and then they, when do they stop? And it's no coincidence, I don't think, that the two teams that you're talking about there are managed by Pep Guardiola. I mean, yep. yes, people can talk about great players. I've played in a team with a collection of the greatest players. It doesn't necessarily mean success. This man is an absolute genius. I mean, tactically, he is off the scale. Remarkable. Should we have a look at the goals? Let's do it, Jake. Right. Bernardo Silva. What a footballer. <laughs> and he touched on after the game how he's disappointed in his individual performance, but... Was he? Is that what he said? He, he touched on how he let his teammates it. down. Um, <laughs> so he wanted to kind of get his uh, credentials back up and listen when the ball fell to him. Such composure. With both finishes here, we touched on the defending and all night it was just individual defending and trying to, to win the ball back as an individual and not setting up a teammate and making play predictable. All of a sudden, Kevin De Bruyne finds space and, and then obviously great pass and a, and a great finish. He's just a total footballer, isn't he? I mean recognising where the space is, his time in a runs. I mean, he's slight, he's not that quick in a, you know, when, when, when someone's going up against him, he wouldn't be running away from players. But his brain, his balance, awareness, balance. his balance, everything about him, that was, I know we say Manchester City were brilliant in the first half, that's as good an individual performance as I've seen in a first half. Obviously, he took the game away from them single-handedly. I think Grealish as well has to take some credit because a lot of people questioned him in his first season. He's become one of their mainstays, one of their most important go-to players in these big games. And he, he, he might not score the goals that people are asking for, but it's, it's the amount of players he draws to him that creates space elsewhere on the pitch. And he's a phenomenally talented, educated footballer. People, he came here as an individual. He's become a team player, defensive, both sides of the game as well. Physical presence, so reliable, so reliable defensively. And we've seen tonight he got three Real Madrid players booked, but his composure when he gets into the box, his decision-making is mm. excellent. And so all round a top performance by Jack as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I must admit, when he first came to this Manchester City team, I wondered, I wondered whether he could fit into it. You know, he was used to picking the ball up in his own half, running 60 yards, getting brought down for a free kick, players getting their bodies in the, uh, teams get body in the box, crosses, you know, free kicks. And I thought, that's not Manchester City. They don't really want to win free kicks. They want to play quick, you know, they get the ball down and play quick. And I just thought, he's going to have to sharpen up, take less touches when he comes to this club. And boy, has he adapted. I mean, fair play to him, a real football brain. He's still got those attributes that were great, but he's adapted to this style of play as well. Mm. But that's also where the credit goes to Pep Guardiola and his coaching staff for having the patience, for seeing him play a certain way at Aston Villa, knowing he can play a certain way at Manchester City, having that long-term vision. 
it's, it's a team effort to turn a player into the sort of player that Yeah, and that's meticulous recruitment as well because he's seen something. He's think this is going to be different to what I've had before and he's bringing something else. And then we see Raheem Sterling was the player playing before him. He was a very different player, but he's seen something in Jack. He's thought this could bring something, another dimension to this team. And it's definitely retaining the ball, holding the ball and bringing players to him, which is going to release other players in other, to spaces. Gundogan, for instance, flies into them pockets that he leaves where players dragged out towards Jack and... Gundogan, whether it's him, whether it's um, Rodri sometimes that comes up there, whether it's Kevin De Bruyne. It's, it's, just, it's not just about him, it's what he does when he gets the ball that it triggers other people. And I, th I think it's a... And you look at the depth of this squad, by the way. Mahrez can't get in his team. Yeah, Phil Foden. Phil Foden can't get Alvarez. in his team. Alvarez, a World Cup winner, comes on and scores. Like, their depth is just like, wow. Yeah, remarkable. Jack Grealish, just transferable skills. Obviously, they recognised what he was doing at Aston Villa and thought, well, if we can get into them situations more often than that for Man City, in the greatest respect to Aston Villa, you're going to be playing with better players and have more options. So, credit to all, all parties all round. Shall we have a look at 3-0? It goes down as an own goal. I, I, I mean, Manchester City deserved four or five, I guess. Hey? In fact, I've just been told Kanji's now been credited with the goal. And so he should. The ball's going on target. He, he certainly touches it. Um, you know, it's in a really dangerous position, isn't it? Kevin De Bruyne must, he probably couldn't place the ball in a better position in terms of one of his crosses. That in-swinging whip, I mean, as a defender, oh. you guys can probably talk about it better than me, but as an attacker, I want an in-swinger coming in. I don't know about you, yeah, I'd hate to defend. They were the hardest to defend, them, and we've seen there in the clip, Carvajal drops early, which means everyone's onside. Mm. And all of a sudden, then Militao's trying to play catch-up, and the flight of the ball is perfect as... We know I'll know with Kevin De Bruyne and it's a it's a great header by Kanji, great touch and unfortunately own goal. And how unfortunately. Well, for Melitao. <laughs> yeah. For Melitao. For, from him, yeah. Uh, let's have a look at 4-0 then. Uh, Alvarez comes on, he gets his goal. As we say, it's another example of the strength and depth that this Manchester City team possess. Yeah, and look at this. Three or four players around the board, light blue shirts. This is at 3-0. Still with the intensity, the desire, the application to go and finish this team off. But that ball from Phil Foden, again, mm. two substitutes coming on the pitch and really being clinical, and it, it's fantastic to see that. But that's the thing, Alvarez wins the ball back and he's not set with just winning the possession. Mm. He thinks, well, where can I get into a goal-scoring opportunity? And, and we have touched on the strength and depth. We had Mara's one of the subs into another sub, Phil Foden, and a great way to pass. Yeah, he almost smothers his chance. He actually runs past the ball, mm. so he, he, he can only place it in there. And normally you'd sort of take a step back and you give yourself a bit of room because you can still whip it into that corner or you can dink or go near post. But he actually, he's so keen, he's, he actually comes above the ball and he smothers himself and he can only go left. But hey, he had a tiny little area to hit and he hit it. All right. Uh, we're going to get some reactions in just a moment. Jack Grealish is going to pop out and chat to us. We'll also hear, of course, from Pep Guardiola. You heard before the break that he was texting Rio today. People in the late 70s and early 80s. Man City about to win the third league title. No one's ever won four. So in terms of English football domestically, they're up there with the absolute best. Three titles in a row. I think Manchester United have done that a couple of times. Liverpool done it in the early 80s. But Manchester United never dominated Europe. They won a Champions League. City have still got to win a Champions League. But when you're talking about how good they can become, this team should be looking at, yes, getting that first Champions League in, um, in a couple of weeks, but for the quality they have in terms of the manager, for the quality they have on the pitch, and also the finances, they can go and buy who they want virtually. They've got to be looking at trying to dominate Europe. And as I said, there's only one team in English football who've ever done that before, and that was Liverpool. And that's how high you know the sky is for, and that's what they've got to be aiming for. So you have a, a longer exchange with Kevin De Bruyne. I don't want to ask you what you said to him, but what, what's kind of his emotional reaction to this to this moment, to this game? Yeah, it was a, uh, it was a. Uh, that was a good way of asking, a, a, but not a, asking. A touching it. moment. <laughs> it was, it was because I, I can't, I can't say it because I have to keep that private. But you know, from what he said to me, I don't know if he's going to say it or the boss will say it. I have even more respect about how he played tonight and how he came and battled. With, uh, with his team. I can't share what he said because I can't share it. That's how, that, that's how it is. But once again, I, I, I'll go back to, for me, he's the most important player. And we talked about, you have different style and different things to do in this team. Most valuable, you have, we all know who it, who it is. He's, he's Erling Haaland. That's the style. We talk about it, Bernardo Silva. And I think the most important player is still Kevin De Bruyne. And you were talking about if he can win a treble with the amount of leagues that he won, and the way they play. For me, it's also City with Pep. It's the tactical 
view of the game and how they play that change the game. You know, some, some people sometimes change the game. You had Sir Alex, Arsene arrive and, and people were like, oh, what is this? They, 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 it changed a bit of the, the, the way of people thought about the game. But I'm sorry, Pep Guardiola now, with his city side, not only with trophy, and I totally understand what you're saying, Jamie, but what we see sometimes, John Stone's coming in and, and all the stuff. And I know and I know it takes that also from Renus Michels. And if you don't know Renus Michels, go and Google Cruyff, him. But he, and he, he put it to a level that, you know, sometimes I sit there and I'm trying to watch what he's doing. John Stone's, the way they made Real Madrid look average because he's always trying to put his team in a situation where they have an overload everywhere on the field plus the way they possess the ball plus the way they defend with it because they keep it and the way they, they, they finish is just brilliant to watch look everyone knows I'm an Arsenal fan but if you don't like City you surely have a problem in your head <laughs> uh, you talked about how good you thought Erling Haaland's performance was if you're a goal scorer though you want to score goals right how will he feel about the game tonight do you think I think he can get into the final, he'll be happy. He's done what he's set out to do this season, broke all the records, still going. Um, but I think he'd just be happy for the team. You know, if he scores a winner in, in the final, I'm sure he'll be happy. Uh, look, we all know that he lives and breathes to score goals. But I think he starts to understand also what he does of the ball is important, and we talked about it. I played games where I scored goals and I was shocking. So you've got to say something else. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I was shocking, really. And sometimes I didn't score and I did everything that you're supposed to do to help your team in a big tie in Europe. It's not only down to goals. And understand, that's, that is bread and butter. We all know. But I saw him jumping. I saw, I saw him going and take his flag and going around. He's going to the final. That's what he was looking for. OK. All right. Sounds good. We're going to take a very quick break, everybody. We'll Welcome back. Good evening from the Etihad. Uh, what a game we saw here today between Manchester City and Real Madrid. Let's run you through some of the action, the best of the action that we saw tonight. Start with the first goal, Thierry. Yeah, the first goal. I mean, they were. it was only coming. The goalkeeper, Thibaut Courtois, made brilliant saves before that. But once again, we talked about it. The vision of Kevin De Bruyne. Stay in your position. He will see you. And then, you know what? It's not an easy one um, for Thibaut Courtois because... It looks like he's going to open up to finish, but he closed it. And maybe Alaba could have blocked it, so Thibaut Kotoa could have stayed maybe where he is. But, you know, you, you can't say about anything about Thibaut Kotoa today. That was a great finish from Bernardo Silva, because if he wasn't there, it would have been way more. Bernardo Silva with the second as well, Micah. Memento was building. It was building. It was at this moment thinking, can City sustain that pressure? <laughs> We're thinking about Madrid and what they can do. Um, but it's just... Intricate play from Man City, who have been excellent tonight. And it's just right place, right time, making that run into the box. And you'll see on the angle here, you've just got to make sure you just get a delicate touch on it. You can't try to direct it, use the pace of the ball, and 2 0. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, half time, get to half time, regroup, and go again in the second half. And that's okay, exactly so what they did. The third goal came in the second half, and shortly before that goal, you were watching the bench. Is that right? Yes, I was actually watching the bench. Well, actually, Jamie, you, um, J um, Thierry, you picked it out, didn't you? The set piece. Go on, go on. Okay. No, you, you picked no, it no, out. No, you no, might no. as well do it. Go on. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take that's your so much credit. Humility. You're, you're a set piece guy. Come on. It's all right. It's just uh, Pep went to, to talk to the set piece coach, sorry, and then went and run to say something to Kevin De Bruyne. What now? What did he say? We don't know. But it looked like after he celebrated with the, with the bench, uh, because this, he actually said something. We don't know what he said, but I spotted that. Interesting. OK, <laughs> let's take a look at the goal. Well, Kevin put the ball literally on the head of Akanji. And you know what? It, 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 it's kind of nice that they give it to the guy that scores, but, you know... It's, it's great on target, isn't it? So that's why. It's a non goal for me. But well done, Akenji. They gave it to you. Yes, sir. Fourth goal of the night. We'll give that to Jamie. Go on. You spotted it. Well, it, this sums up Manchester City's strength and why they are so good at the moment. The two players involved come off the bench Foden and Alvarez. Foden, one of the best players in English football. Alvarez, a World Cup winner. The centre forward for Argentina in that World Cup. Real Madrid lose it in a poor area, the game's gone, obviously we see the scoreline, we see the time. Alvarez has only been on a minute, but fantastic pass, weight of pass. 
And Alvarez, we've seen that a lot this season. He can finish, he can play, we know. But it just shows the strength of this Manchester City team. When you've got players of that quality who can't get in the start 11, you know that's why they're the most difficult team to beat right now in Europe. If it is possible, at the beginning of the goal, this is, and to go back to your point, you're free nil up, game is done, Alvarez comes on, he chases the player of Real Madrid to get the ball back. That's the spirit of a team that can win everything. This is why, I don't know how Pep always manages to get people on their toes and working hard, but you come on usually, you might float around, they don't float around, they come in to, to mean business and he delivered, get the ball back, amazing pass from Foden and his scores. I mean, we talked about the fact that Erling Haaland didn't actually manage to get the goal tonight, but he did have a few opportunities that are worth looking at as yeah, well. Yeah, he did. Uh, Courtois was fantastic. It actually could have been 5-0 in that first half. But you just hear lovely little dink towards the post. You just think, can he guide it? We're talking about the, the centimetres, the millimetres, the inches. But it's a great reaction, say, from Courtois. You've got to give him his credit. Um, but not one, but this is the, this is the excellent one. Here... You just see the fingertips where he just gets his body across. His weight's going one way and he has to use his fingertips. We're talking about, I think he's the best goalkeeper in world football. He showed it last season and again, you know, unfortunate to be on the losing side, but he played his part. And then crossbar, Jamie. Yeah, I mean, it was unlucky. It was great football. It was brilliant again from Gundogan, the back heel. I mean, his form of late's been outstanding, but it's on his right foot. We know he's more powerful on his left, but maybe he's saving them for Istanbul. Exactly. We talked in the pregame about how great that battle was in the first leg between Vinicius Jr. and Carl Walker. Talk me, me through how you saw that play out tonight. Carl Walker's a beast. He, whenever you have to run with him, you might as well stop. <laughs> it, and he was, I That's what was, I felt like with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, at one point he was way behind Vinicius Jr. right in front of us here. And he just caught him, I think, with this side or the, no, the other side, sorry. He just caught him, put his arm on him, took the ball and looked yep. at him and said bye. And he just went the other way. He's, he, when it comes to that, he's too good. He put, he put, I have to say, he put him back in his pocket in the qualifying of the World Cup. He put a lot of players that are actually outstanding in his pocket. You know, it's not easy to it's not easy easy to beat him, and you have to give him a lot of credit. And I know people like if you think about was it two two months ago, or was it maybe a, a month ago when, when Pep, Pep was like, oh well, I don't think he can do this, I don't think he can do that. But whenever he had to play against powerful winger that were quick, he put him back in the team pretty quick. Well, we've actually got some clips of that because we talked about how he was going to play against Vinicius, and Vinicius actually does really well. We talk about distances, yeah, that's the one. and it's just his touch there. And we talk about recovery pace. Oh. It's absolutely outstanding. And that's what he's got. Kyle Walker, again, fantastic tonight. You just think getting the distances right, oh. he's going to come inside. But what does he do? He gets to tackle. That's what I was talking about. Let him have that space, get in front of you. You can always use the slide tackle. And yeah, today he was absolutely brilliant. You've got Liverpool, Arsenal, Man United here, but we're all happy for you, Mike. We've all enjoyed are you this sure? Are you sure you're happy? Yes, we are happy for you right now. We've got some pictures there. of you <laughs> celebrating the evening. Do you want to see some pictures of you celebrating oh, with your look friends? Look at this. Look who we've got here. Rodri. He comes straight to Big Meeks. Not one, but two. We've got Grealish. Oh, look at that. Fantastic behaviour. <laughs> but it doesn't end there. We've got more. Look at Foden coming in for a little poach. There you go. He's getting some loving from Big Meeks. Okay. Ah. We're going to do, do, do the dance. These are my boys. I want it so much for them. They deserve it. To be so good with this team. They just deserve that Champions League now. The two best right backs in Manchester City's history. <laughs> England. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you the opening odds for Manchester City uh, to win the Champions League. Five and a half to one. Crazy heavy favourites. Wow. I'm not talking about odds. I'm not talking about favourites. I'm going to be humble. What are you talking about then? I'm just talking about this wonderful night. We talked about the Etihad. Could you it play it a part? Subdued Could, before the game, it was it? It was a bit, there was nervous energy okay. flowing through the stadium. As soon as I got the first goal, the crowd lifted. We were obviously in Milan last night to watch Inter beat AC Milan and book their place in Istanbul. Having seen that Inter performance and having seen tonight's